before we could extract any of those secrets. I'm just going to bend you, not break you. Hi, it's Leo here from Geek League of the Doom, and I'm here with Pierre Donetto, uh, creator of the G.I. Joe fan film Crimson Archer, and we're having a bit chat, and we're joined by Steve and Chris, both of whom are big G.I. Joe fans. Uh, so let's get cracking. So, Pierre, tell us about G.I. Joe Crimson Archer. Oh, it's well, as again, it's a, it's a fan film, a passion project of mine. Um I grew up in the 80s and 90s, so, like, I was a big fan of the Real American Hero uh, era. And um, with everything going on today, I just want to bring that back to the people again and all the fans again. Uh, what Hasbro did before with the first three films, like Rise of Cobra, Retaliation, and then the Origins film. Mm. Um, a lot of fans didn't didn't like it too much. Uh, they, didn't really, they didn't draw them back to how they grew up to. Yeah. What this film's about, it, it it it's like watching the cartoons again, but brought to real life. Mm. So you'll remember the dialogue, the type of conversations they would have, even the costumes itself. And it, it just brings you back. So you, you'll see it, a character, and you'll know exactly who it is from what you grew up to. Okay, yeah. um, as you can see with the trailers and stuff, uh, I showcased a lot of the of the characters we had, but there's a lot more that's not in the trailers. Oh, right. So a little, you know, I throw in a lot of Easter eggs that date back a lot of Hasbro brand stuff like Transformers and such like that. So be on the lookout for some Easter eggs out there in the in the movie when you guys get to watch it. Well, look, um, I've, seen the, I've seen the trailer. I've only seen the one trailer. Um, I understand there's, there's, there's four trailers out there. So, um, you know, maybe we'll go back and have a look at that after this, after this uh, interview here. Uh, so what yeah. we... What were your earliest memories of G.I. Joe? What kind of like, you know, what watching the cartoon and the comics? What did I like about it? Hmm. Um, cartoons, you start, you got to... I mean, I love the, car I love the cartoons. Hang on. The cartoons were fantastic. Um, I, I grew up to, a, you know, I grew up a lot with the cartoons, even got the action figures growing up. Um, so, you know, the good guys and the bad guys, Cor Corbra and G.I. Joe's. And uh, my brothers and I would always collect them and stuff like that. Other than, you know, like He-Man and other stuff. But G.I. Joe was a big favorite of mine. And um, and with G.I. Joe, the movie cartoon that came out, um, this movie is almost like the after effect of that saga in a way. Um, it's an original script. So it's nothing like a Hasbro writer wrote or anything. It's one of ours. Um, and, um, it, it, the actors we got, they're, pro, they're pros. Mm. Okay. I mean, we got awarded actors from locally around here. So we, we got great acting involved. So it, they didn't know anything about GI Joe at first. So they did their research and mm. I, I made sure to get the accent down and everything. Um, of course I had some slack about some of the, some of the characters, how they're, you know, how they look and everything, but you know, I had to do some sacrifice. I want a better performance. I want the acting. I get as close as I can, but the acting is very important because the fans will understand. You you know, it's these guys you grew up to. You want them to be the character, you know, and that's what I brought with this film. It's a high production fan film. I don't know if there's any high production fan films out there, but this one was a big ticket. Um, I mean, I noticed. I mean, obviously, I've only seen the one trailer, but you've got a lot of on was on location shooting, a lot of wide shots. You know, I often find with fan films, not that I watch loads of them, but they're all in the always in the woods, you know, and things like that. But here, you've got yeah. you know, these shots of you've yeah. got military like vehicles, an airfield, helicopters flying in. Yeah, it's great. You know, oh so, yeah, those are real. Those those are real. So. Yeah. um uh, like I said, this is a high production fan film. I worked with this, this, the state that I live in, in this country, in the U.S., and yeah, we worked yeah. together on, yeah, we worked together on getting the permits I needed um, for the film. I can't say too much about it because I'm under a non-disclosure agreement with some of the government stuff and everything, so I can't discuss too much about it, uh, other than, you know, we did use them. Um, the actors were very excited. <laughs> you know, they, they were they were all getting so it took a while to film the scene because they're just so excited being inside the chopper and everything. And uh 
we had a major shot. We had the state capitol. We had the state fairgrounds in the middle of the fair. It was it was beautiful. And in uh, a penitentiary, a live penitentiary we used in our state, we went there twice. So there were actually some uh, minimal uh, live prisoners that were there. So we had instructions what to do when we went inside. So we used an abandoned area of the prison. Um, so it was great. Um, yeah, lots of stuff. I mean, we even trained the actors to scuba dive a little bit when they got dropped in the water to go up on shore. And, it, you know, the guy who played Duke was very familiar how to scuba dive already. So yeah. we had to train the other actors to do it. So, you know, giving these actors the time to, to train like the military took a little bit because they're not really military guys. So, you know, it took, you know, we had a crash course in it. So I might get some slack from ex-military for the way they did perform, but it's the best I can do with these actors. But again, it's a cartoon brought yeah, to life. No one's you know. the cartoon is, uh, you know, military accurate, I suppose, isn't it? But, uh... It's not 100%, but I get as close as I can with these guys. And um, but again, like I said, it's based off the cartoon. And we did create PSAs. We have a Cobra PSAs, not just the G.I. Joe. We have a Cobra. It's funny. Uh, it's like a parody of the of the whole public service announcements they had back after the, after the shows. But um, it was a good experience that I enjoyed with everyone. It was a long experience, <laughs> for sure. Um, on my end, it was just a headache. But uh, <laughs> but everybody else enjoyed it. How long did it take you to shoot? Um, we started principal production in 2016 and didn't end in 2019. Then we went to post which was the pandemic. And that took a bit at doing Zoom calls and everything to get it down and locked in. Um, and then we went for screening afterwards yeah. to all the movie theaters here locally throughout my state. Um, we sold out. It was very impressive um, mm -hmm. throughout the towns. I had prime time, which hard to get. You know, to, you got Hollywood, they take up the spot in her prime time, but I was able to push the film to get prime time in the theaters. Um, but I can't wait for the whole world, uh, you know, to see this film. Um, yeah. Which is actually it, my next question is like the rollout of like the release and stuff. What is the plan with that? On the, yeah, with the rollout with this, it's it's very delicate. Yeah, because the, it's you know, again, it's a fan film, so you know we're not able to profit from this film at all. You know, um, a lot of box office ticket sales went to charity. You know, you can't profit from a fan film because of IP and so forth. Um, my plan is to release it online for free for everyone to see. Okay, that is the plan. Um, in case Hasbro starts knocking on my door again <laughs> about you know financial reasons, I might need the fans' help. Um, because again, you know, it's a fan passion project of mine, and I hope the UGI Joe fans love it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not perfect by all means. Um, of course, it's always like that with everything you do. Hang on for one second, but um, it's it's close enough. That's why I tell my guys it's 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 not perfect, but it's close. And um, well, but well, it's cool. You get limited resources i mean it's a wonder you've managed to do as much as you have done to be honest like i've said a lot of the fan films i have seen tend to be like you know people dressed as with lightsabers in the woods you know it tends to be like we had a fight scene we had we had some fight scenes in the woods and you know everybody can get a you know set of woods anywhere really yeah. so i wanted to make it more unique where we bring some high production sets involved in a, in a in a fan film and you know people brought the question and you either have a lot of balls or you're crazy as hell to fund a fan film at this level <laughs> knowing that you don't own it you can't have profit but i love gi joe man you but, know and i know you spoke to larry harmer about it um yes what was the uh the, the feedback pierre here with gi joe crimson archer and larry harmer be sure to watch uh, G.I. Joe Crimson Archer. Well, well, Larry, oh, he, well, when I showed, when I met him, I showed up, I played Snake Eyes in the movie, too. Right. And um, when I met him, it was at this place right here where we met, Pop Culture. And um, the, the, the owner, he, he set that up. And um, first thing he asked me, 
where's the best pho restaurant in town? And he was talking about food. So, <laughs> so we showed him, you know, a good spot for all that. Uh, but people thought I was a son. Well, people came in for autograph. People came in for autographs and stuff like they thought I was his son. I'm seeing. I'm sitting next to him. <laughs> yeah. So it's a slight, it's a slight similarity, but yeah. You know, but when he talked about the character, he's excited that I was an Asian man dressed up as Snake Eyes. But mm -hmm. that was his true vision from long ago, and this is probably why they made this the origins film the way it was because mm -hmm. that's. That's what he wanted originally. Um, always, we had a big chat about the whole characters and stuff like that. And, you know, I had a discussion on film about the origins. Should have been more like the Vietnam War where you had Stalker and Tommy and, you know, and Snake Eyes when, you know, he's carrying the M60. I rather went with that direction mm. with the origins versus what they had today, you know. And, um, and we discussed and I talked to Ron Rudat. When he was in town, he was the guy who created like the Cobra logo and some of the action figure sculpts and everything like that. And uh, we discussed it, too. Um, but like I said, in the, the fan film world, it's a hard business, man. You got to be careful. You yeah. know, you got to be careful. So especially when you spend all these resources and all this money on a project like this, they kind of want they kind of ask why, you yeah. know, <laughs> you know. So but again, I love G.I. Joe and no one knows who I am. And the only way to get my name out is to do something I love was G.I. Joe. And, you know, with an established fan base and all, why not, you know? So my next film, if you guys like this film, you guys will like my future films. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I know that they, they were planning to do the G.I. Joe and Transformers film in, the, in the, the actual sort of series. I mean, I don't know if that will ever happen, but I know there was... Well, there, well the, it's funny that you said that because I talked about adding transformers and since they haven't done that yet mm -hmm. they didn't want me to kind of start portraying you know start implementing that quite yet so that's why i made them as easter eggs versus actually doing like a whole crossover because they mm -hmm. haven't quite done it yet so um just to be fair but there's right now hasbro's gone to a revamp at this time so like my connections out there have changed everything's changed like a lot of people have been laid off mm -hmm. you know the department's gone um so things are a little different so now at this time i'm coming out to you guys the fans out to the public hey i got this cool gi joe movie that you guys might like <laughs> so and i hope you guys like it um again it's based off what you know some some folks would represent it like they come out of the theater and i would ask them what you think and they would say it reminds you of like space balls but of a gi joe twist that's what kind of reminded them of. So if you like space balls, you might like this too. That kind of humor is involved. So um uh a big favorite was Major Blood. He is kind of like your Darth Helmet character in a way. So come in, you know, kind of very comical in a sense. And who I quite like on the trailer is Dr. Mindbender. Dr. Mindbender. He was also kind of a funny that was a good favorite too, you know. It was funny because the costume for him. And you know how Dr. Mindbender looks. He's half naked with the chains and everything. And during auditions, the actor's like, now, Pierre, now I don't have all this, you know. I was like, that's okay. So, you know, I talked to the prop guys. We made this purple chest piece to cover up the lack of, <laughs> per se. <laughs> but it worked out great. You know, it looks just like Dr. Mindbender about the muscular chest, you know. Um but his character, he played the character real good. Well, You'll like him as well. Yeah, he, I mean, you get to see him in his lab with all his gadgets, you know. Uh, you know, I don't want to blow it too much, but I know he's he's doing something to Scarlet, you know, as the, the you know, the premise of the film is they've captured her, mm. okay? They've captured Scarlet on a, she was on a secret mission and they captured her and they want to convert her into a, one of the Cobra agents, Okay. So now Duke, you know, and his team are out to go try and get her yeah. back. So, and you like you've seen some of the characters now from Joe's. You got the Snake Eye, you got Beachhead, you got uh, Shipwreck um, on the team. Roadblock um, is on the team. So uh, people like Roadblock. They loved his acting in Roadblock. So yeah, there's a lot of people have likes whoever you know. You might whoever's your favorite man. It's it's all there. 
So who, who was your favorite? Who was your favorite like GLA Joe character? Maybe. Mine was Snake Eyes. Mine was Snake Eyes, and I get to play them. So I hope you guys like it. Who's your favorite Cobra character then? I would say Storm Shadow. Classic, classic matchup. See, I like oh, yes. Firefly and Scrapine. <laughs> were my Scrap, yeah. I like the toy of Scrapine. So I like okay. Zartan and Scrap. Um, I think from a figure point of view, I always used to like the Cobra Eels. Oh yeah, the eels. Yeah, that's the Cobra's Navy Seal unit. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, <laughs> around the mouth would always get lost. But <laughs> did you ever? You did you ever watch the? Uh, well, sorry, read the comics as well as the cartoons when you were young. I did. I did. Yeah. When I talked to Larry about this, like, like I said, those brought more on like a, like a cartoon into live action, like the Sunbow picture. You know, Sunbow made the cartoons, but then when I talked to Larry. We start implementing some of the comic book stuff mm. into the film. Like you still got the the Scarlet and the Snake Eyes romantic kind of a thing going on, and you know, and still kind of flirts with Duke at the same time. So, <laughs> like you do in Sunbow. So it was kind of a weird situation with that. They laughed about it, but uh, but yeah, we did implement the fight scene with Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. That was a beautiful piece. That's I told the film crew I want this scene to be the highlight of the film. This yeah. fight scene right here, you know, Scarlet. I mean, that's Scarlet, but it's he just rescued Scarlet. Snake Eyes did, and Storm Shadow's ready to stop him. Mm. And the fight goes on while the Joes are outside the prison duking out with Major Blood and the troopers. Okay, so we got plenty of action going on, like there isn't a. A regular G.I. Joe cartoon. Mm. Um, I didn't want to bore the audience. You don't want to see boring dialogue all the time. You want to see what's going on in the action. So I try to fill in as much action as I can, plus to understand the storyline. So enough dialogue for you to understand the whole premise of the movie. And if you're a big fan of Joe's, you'll begin to understand how it all relates. Excellent. So I noticed, obviously, on some of the sort of the screen grabs I've seen, there's like you've done quite a few like costumes, like the Cobra Troopers and stuff. Mm -hmm. so were, they, were they sort of made in house, or that like conversions of like just things that were laying around, or the costumes that were made? Well, yeah, well, you know, we made that. Okay, what we made out of that, I talked to a guy named Viper, Viper Pit Studios. Oh, he God. made a lot of costumes, um, so he made us the Baroness outfit. He made us the Cobra Commander helmet, hmm. all the Cobra Trooper helmets, and Major Blood's helmet. Then we made the rest up, okay? Like on Major Blood's costume, we made the arm out of foam material, and then uh, his chest piece was like a, a dirt biker chest protective vest that we cut, you know, painted up and redecoed. Um, the Troopers was very easy, really. They wore like a blue f flight suit, yeah. Then we found a bunch of these Cobra tank tops to put over. Okay. And then they had all the utility belts in on the boots and gloves. And pretty, you know, it's a pretty simple setup. You, you, you'll, 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 you see guys in public out here where I live, they get shocked when they see these guys. They think they're a bunch of terrorists. Well, technically they are for Cobra, but, <laughs> you know, but they look pretty intimidating in the public. But, you, uh, you got Halloween sewn up for the next few years, I suppose, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. But, yeah, but everybody had a good time. I would love to do it again, another G.I. Joe film, depending on you fans out there, if you like the first one. Um, because on the second one, we already have a script laid out. Hmm. You know, um, newer character, new Joes, new Cobra, um, still kind of in relation with the first. But it only depends how this first one goes with all you fans out there. You guys like it? We'll make the second yeah, one. Sure. I mean, I think, I mean, to be fair, I mean, G.I. Joe, I would say, is somewhat underrepresented in, um, in like, you know, I think the, 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 the live action films weren't the kind of like the, the, the hits like the Transformers films were. Partially because I think, obviously, they, it was quite different. I mean, I know it's very different. You yeah, hated I'm, it, didn't you? But, I don't uh, like, yeah. I didn't mind the second one. Um, uh, I I just wanted to see, like with with yours, the you know the costumes you know from your childhood, right? 
Right. And that's what we did. Even like everybody loved the Snake Eyes costume. And you saw Snake Eyes, you knew it was Snake Eyes. You know, same thing with Storm Shadow, Scarlet, and the rest of the characters. You knew who they were. Okay. Yeah. Oh, especially Cobra. Cobra, see, Cobra wasn't like a military outfit like the Joes were. See, again, the stuff for the Joes were a little easier. Cobra, they had very unique outfits. Yeah. So, so we, you know, thanks to all the, the prop makers and hairdressers out there, you know, all my people, they, they did a good job. Excellent. So, um, I mean, I, I guess without spoiling this one, obviously we've, we've not seen it yet. I mean, uh, is it... Um... Is it like a film that leads on to more, or is it kind of more of a standalone? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll get the traditional, you know, stingers at the end of the film. Even after the credits, there's a little surprise. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of course, you know, it, it leads to the second portion that we already have made out for a script. And if that gets made, we'll, get, we'll do that. But, yeah, there's a continuance. There's plenty of stingers. So, yes. Yeah, we could spin yeah. off to whatever. There, there was a talk about doing a whole series of just the Dreadnoughts. Oh, you know, know. Yeah. the spinoff of that from the Crimson Archer piece. So, and then the Ninja Force was a talk, another series of its own of Ninja Force, introducing Big Boa and such like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the it, the world's big uh, when it comes to the G.I. Joe universe. So we have plenty of material to do it. As far as for costumes... They're already being made. They're already here. Here's a sneak peek. I don't know if you want to tell the public or not. If we do Ninja Force, we already got slice and dice. Costumes made, everything ready to go. I have to ask you, as a British person, are you familiar with the action force variation of um Yes, I was familiar with that. Um I know today they're actually back again doing the the six inch line. Um <laughs> But yeah, I was familiar with some of that, even Eagle Force back then too. So I mean, there was a bunch of those, those knockoff. I wouldn't say knockoff. They're just another alternate version of the GI Joe figures, yeah. you know. But that's always there. They they incorporated the in, in like the the large. Uh, were they twelve inch figures, the Action Man figures. They like twelve Action inch. Man, yeah, yeah. Was, they were called Man. Yeah. It was GI Joe for you guys, but um, then Action Man. For yeah. us, it was Action Man, and then it was. Yeah. It became. I think it was Palatoy that. Produced the figures over here, and it was um, Action Man, Action Force, mm. and they, were, mm. they released a line that were kind of based on like they had like, a German stormtrooper, an Australian. Oh. Um, okay, yeah, okay, that's really okay. I guess I haven't really seen that. I think Leo showed me the other day some figures. One other day, a link to a. So I was customizing some figures too, and then I think it was the Commando guy I was making, and he showed me a link the other day about it, and um. Yeah, yeah that's very funny. Um, that I, that I ha happened happened across actually, um, and uh, you know, it's actually his Christmas present I showed you. So he doesn't he hasn't had it yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got you. Okay, okay. But uh, um, yeah, but I thought because I think they're they're made in line with uh, the G the GI Joe, so you can kind of like you know put them in, you know, sort of scenario. Yeah, I'll give you that in a minute, but. <laughs> But yeah, when it's like uh, yeah, so we, in the UK for a long time it was it was called Action Force, and then they had the same they had the figures like the early ranges were yeah, the Baron Iron Blood. Yeah, they had they had their own like Red Shadows, which were their own bad guys here in the UK rather than Cobra, and then it eventually became Cobra. Yeah. So yeah, oh, okay, had, okay. Sort of history and stuff. But uh, well, what were they called back at the UK before Cobra? Action, Action Force. Force? But then there were there were different. Okay. They were, they were Cobra. Action Force International Heroes. That's what they were called over here. But what, what would you call the bad guys, though? They were um, the Red Shadows. So it's Red Shadow. Red Shadow. Okay, I've heard of they Red Shadow. So yeah, they weren't so said They were they were purposely done by Palatoy. They They're like British, made their own British only line ones. of. And then Cobra yeah, came in later on when yeah. sort of like okay. the came out. Yeah, yeah, they incorporated it in the end. Yeah. Right? But some of the figures, so they released some stuff that was. They did like SAS Force. Z Force was like kind of your regular army. They had yes okay. Force, um, Space Force, Space Force, Q Force, which were like in like boats underwater. and underwater and stuff, divers and stuff. And they oh, had, I see. So the original SAS figure, you had a, like an SAS, it was it's very similar to the Cobra Stinger, but it was an SAS like vehicle. And you had the original okay. was actually your the American first release of Snake Eyes. 
but it was an SAS commando in the but it was actually snake eyes. And he was called Storm. I got you. Did you collect your figures and toys when you were a kid? I still have them. I even have the flag still. So flag. Flag. oh man, I'd love the flag. <laughs> got, yeah, I got the flag. I got a complete terror drone. I got I mean I got a lot of the holy grails. Wow. Um because a lot of them yeah, were in the UK. They, yeah. when, it, when it was sort of more sort of incorporated with a sort of G.I. Joe, like we never got like the the, the dreadnought figure torch was never released in the UK. And he was oh, like, okay. the dreadnought in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was annoying. Oh. This is before the internet, so you couldn't get him online and stuff. Chuckles. Oh, right. Right, right. right. Chuckles over here, could you? No. Yeah, my dad got mad at me when I was a kid because he was complaining the cost of the flag and it's like seven and a half feet long. Like, where are we going to put it in the house? Yeah, you know? where are so, we put it in the house? I mean, it's a monster. I love, yeah, I've only it was a monster thing. thing once, and that was a shop in Luton, and it, that was years ago. How much was that? I don't know. It was up. It was up on a shelf quite high. Yeah, on it, the old room. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I set it up once in the living room, and I had a. To put it all, to take it all down, you know, when we had gas and everything. So I couldn't display it as a kid. It was a very short period when I had display. But now, as an adult, I have it displayed in my basement on, on a nice table. So I don't have to worry about that now. But, yeah, I still kept a lot of my old toys from back in the day. Um, actually, one of the movie screens that I had for Crimson Archer, a, a fan came out to me and gave me a figure. A mint condition, mail order. It's like. It, uh, it was a, a ninja viper, the, the, the teal storm shadow looking figure. Oh, yeah. And yeah, this thing is valuable. I'm like, are you sure you want to give this to me? Yes, no, don't do it. You got to have this. Thank you for this movie. Oh. So, and he gave me that figure. So I still, I kept it in the case and everything. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of G.I. Joe fans my age come see this movie and said, hey, man, this is like a love letter to all us G.I. Joe fans. Fantastic. And that's like pretty much it is, you know. It's to make up what Hasbro's done to the fans when it came to GI Joe, especially where, in their movie. Where can people find details about it? Where can people? I'll, I'll leave it in the description of this video. But... We have a Trendsetter Productions YouTube uh, site, and we have a Facebook page, um, and that's it right now. Um, just because I've been so busy with this film thing, I haven't got a chance to talk to my media person to get more of our links together and website together. But right now, you can find us on Facebook, on Trendsetter Productions, and on YouTube at this time. Um, you find a lot of more information and content through there. Um, or on my page personally, too. I I talk a lot about my, my projects. So, so anyone, anyone watching this video, I'll link obviously anything uh, that Pierre's got in the in the description below, and obviously there's already the trailer on the web on the uh, on the channel as well. Um, the uh, but the, our Zoom's telling us we're running out of time, so I'll, I'll, we'll have to kind of wrap it up. It only let we did record for so long, uh, so we've got the, the basic version. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll 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 do another one with you guys after you guys watch the movie. Okay. I'm so. looking, looking forward to it. We we watched the trailer. Yeah, the trailer. Didn't yeah, yeah. I did, I did. I didn't realize there were different trailers. To be fair, I thought there was just the one trailer. So we will check out the new trailers. Uh, but Pierre, thanks for joining us. I know it's like a big time difference uh, here in the UK compared to you guys down there. So I'm sure no problem. Uh, bed or something. But, uh, <laughs> we're off to go and see a, a, a gig now. But um, uh, but great talking to you. And obviously, we look forward to um, obviously seeing the the completed project uh, when it's out. And obviously, we'll give her a big shout out when it's uh, when it's out. That sounds trailer. great, guys. From the trailer, it looks great. So I can't wait. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you love the trailer, you'll love the movie. So. Okay, sure. Awesome. Okay.